Hey guys, my name's Don and this is St. Benedict in hopefully under four minutes. So let's get started. So St. Benedict was born in Norcia in about 480 after death. Through his life, he attended some primary schools in Norcia, after which he went to Rome to broaden his knowledge of law and literature. While there, he became disgusted by the desolate lifestyle of his peers and also the tough political situation in Rome. So because of this, he retired to Aphile with a group of priests. While there in Aphile, St. Benedict worked his first miracle, which he restored an earthenware wheat sifter. And the notoriety that this miracle brought drove St. Benedict to withdraw from social life. So pretty much St. Benedict was like deuces and decided to live in a cave as a hermit. He only really had one contact with the outside world at this point and it was a monk named Romanus who happened to have a monastery by the cave. Romanus would tie some bread to a piece of string and lower it down to him so that St. Benedict could eat. And after about three years of solitary, some shepherds by the area befriended Benedict. They saw this man in a cave and they were like, let's follow his teachings. He seems like a wise person. And so the pastoral and apostolic principles of the Benedictine order took root. The rule of St. Benedict laid the foundation for Western monastic life. I won't talk about the rule in depth right now, but you guys should definitely read about it. Next, we're not 100% sure. Oh, that's so cute. As you can tell, she's about the friendliest dog in the world. <laughs> and during his life, St. Benedict worked a ton of miracles, like the time when him and his monks went up to a desolate mountaintop and they were all really thirsty and St. Benedict just found some water. Or another time where he made Maurus walk on water so that he could save Placidus' life. Or another time where he actually brought a young kid back from death. And St. Benedict worked a ton of miracles, more than just these ones I just listed. And you should definitely check him out because he was an amazing saint. Anyways, at the end of his life, he actually foresaw his death six days before it happened. So because he foresaw his death, he had the grave of his sister, St. Scholastica, opened so that they could share it together. And he died surrounded by his monks on March 21st, 547 after death in Monte Cassino, Italy. St. Benedict also had a couple of medals that were made after him. And there's a lot of research that can be done about these medals and there's a lot of symbolism inside the medal itself and I actually have some right here. But there are some things that the medal kind of wards off and protects you from. So I'm gonna list off about eight of them really fast. So number one is to destroy witchcraft and all diabolical haunting influences. So number two is to impart protection to people who are tormented or tempted by evil spirits. Number three is the conversion of sinners into the Catholic Church, especially when they are approaching death. Number four is to serve as an armor against temptation. Number five is to destroy the effects of poison. Number six is really cool. It's to secure a timely and healthy birth for children. Number seven is to afford protection against storms and lightning. Number eight can actually protect you from the things going on now, especially with COVID-19. It's to kind of serve as a remedy against bodily afflictions and to help protect you against contagious diseases. And of course, this is when the medals are blessed by a priest. It doesn't necessarily have to be a Benedictine. Anyways, guys, this was St. Benedict in under four minutes. I hope you guys did enjoy and I hope you guys did learn something. Go ahead and comment what you learned from this video. What was the thing that stuck out the most to you? Anyways, thank you guys. You guys are awesome.